Hello, my name is Dr. Carlson Sweet, and this is Dr. Desky and Nurse Dishler. We are here to tell you about an acne medication called isotretinoin. Some other names for this medicine are Accutane, Sotret, and Clavaris. In this short video, we will review this medication in detail. First, we will describe what is required of you if you are to take this medication. Then we will explain why this medication is used and the common and uncommon side effects. Special attention will be given to female patients because pregnancy must be avoided. Then the Eye Pledge program will be discussed. Finally, we will outline the protocol for getting started and how to care for your skin during the course of treatment. First, let's review the requirements to take isotretinoin. To take this medication, you must be able to do the following. You must be available for monthly blood tests and visits. You must live locally and have health insurance for the next six months. You cannot drink alcohol while taking this medication. You should not have elective surgery or dental procedures. If you are female, you must avoid pregnancy. Also, you must inform us if you are being treated for depression or liver disease. Who would be considered for isotretinoin treatment? Isotretinoin is a medication that treats severe acne. It is a synthetic form of vitamin A and works by drying up the oil glands. Isotretinoin is a medication used for cystic acne, severe comedonal plugged pore acne, and for acne that has not cleared with conventional acne medications. Sometimes it is used for other skin conditions not related to acne. It is often called the miracle drug for acne because for many patients it clears their acne and the results are lifelong. The medication comes as a capsule. It is usually taken by mouth two times a day and for a five month course. If you are currently taking oral antibiotics for your acne, you must stop them if you begin isotretinoin. Is isotretinoin safe? Yes, if it is used correctly. Isotretinoin works very well to treat acne, but it also has some side effects. During your treatment course, you may experience some of these side effects. Some side effects are more common than others. Because of this, all patients must do monthly fasting lab work and have monthly follow-up with your medical provider. We will be giving you detailed written information on the side effects of this medication, but I would like to review them with you as well. Common side effects that you can expect to have are dry lips and dry skin. This may lead to some skin rashes and mild nosebleeds. You may not heal as well while you are taking isotretinoin. You will be given advice on how to treat these common side effects if they occur. There are also side effects that are less likely to occur. Less common side effects include headaches, muscle aches, elevation in blood fats, visual changes, mild temporary hair loss, liver effects, allergic reactions, and depression. Please let us know if you have ever been treated for depression. Patients with severe health problems may be advised against taking isotretinoin. Let your provider know if you have significant health problems. The medication is highly regulated because it causes serious birth defects. It must not be taken when pregnant and therefore all women of childbearing potential must comply with strict guidelines when taking the medication to ensure that they do not get pregnant. A program called iPledge has been established to regulate isotretinoin and to ensure specific guidelines are followed. Again, pregnancy must be prevented in female patients of childbearing potential. This is done by complete abstinence, or if a female is sexually active, two reliable forms of birth control. If needed, the morning after pill can be taken. If pregnancy occurs, termination must be considered. Female patients who are of childbearing potential must agree to verify two forms of birth control that they will adhere to for the whole course of treatment and for one month after the completion of isotretinoin. For sexually active patients, two forms of birth control must be used 
each time with intercourse. The information on acceptable forms of birth control will be found in your iPledge booklet. In general, there needs to be one primary form of birth control and one secondary form. Primary birth control includes tubal sterilization, vasectomy, IUD, and hormones such as birth control pills. Secondary forms of birth control are the latex condom, diaphragm, and cervical caps and sponges. There are forms of birth control that are not acceptable. These can also be found in the iPledge booklet. In review, pregnancy must be prevented in female patients of childbearing potential. This is done via complete abstinence or two reliable forms of birth control. If needed, the morning after pill, known as Plan B, can be taken. If pregnancy occurs, termination must be considered. Isotretinoin has no effect on sperm or male fertility. What is iPledge? iPledge is a program that was established to regulate isotretinoin and to ensure that specific guidelines are followed. Patients must read all the literature in the iPledge booklet and agree to be entered in the iPledge program. It is required by law to sign informed consent forms prior to starting isotretinoin. If you are 18 years of age or younger, a parent or guardian must co-sign the consent form as well. iPledge has several requirements. You must not share this drug with others. You must not donate blood while taking the medication and for one month after. All female patients must follow strict instructions so they do not get pregnant. You cannot drink alcohol while taking isotretinoin. You must stop your previous acne medications. Also, do not take Tylenol. Do not wax, get piercings, tattoos, dental procedures, or other cosmetic procedures. If you and your skincare provider decide oral isotretinoin is right for you, several steps need to be taken. You will need to sign the appropriate consent forms, obtain fasting lab tests, and register with the iPledge program. If you are under the age of 18, a parent or guardian must read and co-sign all questions on the consent forms. We will order a baseline lab and monthly lab tests. These are fasting lab tests. Do not eat anything after midnight and go to the lab early the next morning. No lab slip is needed as the order is in the computer. Call us on our dedicated phone line the day after you get your lab tests for the results. Lastly, you will be registered in the iPledge program. We will register you. For us to register you in the iPledge program, we need the last four digits of your social security number. We can also register you if you do not have a social security number. When you are on oral isotretinoin, you will need to take special care of your skin. We would like you to use a mild cleanser. Each morning, apply a moisturizer with sunscreen and wear sun protective clothing. To combat the dryness that you will experience, a moisturizer, lip balm, and a thin coating of Vaseline inside your nose will be helpful. Do not use abrasive scrubs, cleansers, or masks. Do not wax your skin, get body piercing, or other cosmetic procedures while on isotretinoin or for one month after completion of your treatment course. It is common to get worse during the first month of treatment but then your acne should improve each month. On your follow-up visits, it's important to tell your provider if you're having any side effects from your treatment. Some patients with acne respond slowly and incompletely to isotretinoin. These patients may need a prolonged course of treatment. The good news is that at least 50% are lucky enough to have a permanent cure after a single course of treatment. Unfortunately, there are some patients in which the acne returns. 
In this short video, we have presented a lot of information. We described in detail your obligation if you're to begin this medication. We covered why the medication is used and its side effects. The protocol for getting started was also explained. You will receive a packet that contains the important information that was presented. Please let your provider in the Department of Dermatology know if you have any questions.